craving. This is a one hour training. We're going to learn how to create a self care habit we love, like big heart shaped eyes, crave and love and want to do and, you know, defend against all competing priorities. Because I think that's when the magic happens. So if you're joining us live, as I said, your video and mic are going to be off, but please engage in the chat. I hope you will. And, um, you know, go ahead and pull up your workbook that you should have received in the latest email from me. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the link in case you don't have that. So you can just access that instantly. Or you can grab your journal if you prefer to engage that way. But go ahead and type in the chat where you're joining us from uh, and you know why you're here because that's page one of our workbook today. It's all about intention. Like, why are you here? Why did you sign up for this training? Intentions are energetic boomerangs that we put out into the universe. So maybe some part of you cares about caring for yourself. Or maybe you're curious about what self-care is all about. Maybe you have an established self-care routine, but you're really looking forward to falling even more in love with it. And you wanna get some really practical skills on how to do that. So let us know in the chat. I, in case you don't know me, I'm Ellen Gilbert. I'm a self-care coach. I partner with folks on an inward journey of courageous vulnerability as they fall even more in love with themselves and their lives. My favorite thing ever is talking about my unique approach to self-care. So that's why I wanted to design this training so we can just get right into it. Because usually what I do are group coaching circles and community gatherings and collaborative style Zoom circles. Uh, but today's gonna look a little different and the replay is gonna be shared as a podcast episode as well as across my platforms. So that's another reason I wanted to invite you in with your camera off because it's up to you whether or not you wanna show your face. Yeah. And yeah, if you're new here, again, just check out luminousleanings.com for more on what I'm about and how to work with me. We're going to talk a little bit about that at the end as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and today's flow with all of you. Bear with me. I've got two laptops going. I've got my fancy microphone on. I've got my new webcam. So I'm in HD now. <laughs> so I've got a lot of tech going on, but it's going to be great. Don't even worry about it. All right, here we go. Our flow for today. So we're going to start, of course, with a little meditation. We've got to get ourselves grounded and in the right heart and body and spirit and mind space to talk about self-care and self-love today. Then we're going to go into what is in the way of loving your self-care, like being so in love with it. What's in the way? We're going to talk about the habit loop and core desired feelings, two of my favorite tools which I put together. And I'm going to tell you why it's so important to start and end with how we want to feel in our self-care. Then we're gonna go into stocking and mixing our self-care toolkit, setting smart self-care goals. We're gonna talk about the barriers, again, what's in the way of loving, but also what's in the way of follow through. And what are some intuitively driven solutions that you're gonna come up with, not me, but you. You are the expert in your own life followed by our accountability plan. We're gonna come up with some accountability measures to make sure that we stick to it. And finally, I'm gonna invite you into Resilient, which is a free offering that kicks off here in just a few short weeks. And I'm really excited to talk more about, followed by Q and A. So I hope you'll have some questions. Again, type them in the chat throughout and then I can answer them at the end if there are any. All right, awesome. So 
Here we go. Let's start with our little meditation. Very, very short. And if you're new to meditation, just think of it as making a visit to yourself. Making a visit to yourself, checking in. It doesn't have to be this big, scary thing. So let's get comfortable. Maybe with the feet flat on the floor, if that's possible for you, or maybe you're sitting on the earth with an energized yet relaxed spine. Sit in a way that is easeful for you. Every spine and every body is different. And if it feels okay, gently close the eyes or soften the gaze. And let's take some deep breaths in through the nose and sigh out the mouth. So in. 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 And now just kind of shake it out gently, moving the neck side to side, shaking out the wrists, stretching in a way that feels good. And just landing here in your body, landing in the sensations inside of this field of awareness, this present moment experience, the precious here and now. Mm. I want you to get in touch with how do you want self-care to feel? You don't have to use words in the mind. You can use sensations, imagination, symbols, textures. Visions. How do you want your self care to feel? Maybe seeing yourself in that balanced way where the body feels the way you want it to feel. Perhaps the mind is strong and focused and dedicated or joyful and humorous and your heart is light and open. How do you want self-care to feel once you have that image in your mind? Bring that felt sensation to your heart. and breathe into it like a lung, deeply. <sighs> you can imagine the air going in through the center of your heart, up and over and out down the back of the heart. <sighs> Allowing this sensation to spread throughout the entire body. As you breathe, it grows and spreads. Relaxing every inch of your precious body. the sacred portal of wisdom and experience. <sighs> Bringing that imagined sense of how you want to feel to the entire body till it's 
buzzing and alive with it. Driven by your own curiosity, how would this feel? What does self-care feel like? What does self-love feel like? What colors, textures, sensations light up this entire field of your awareness? I invite you now to connect with the part of you that cares about caring for yourself. Perhaps bringing a hand to the heart, acknowledging your own goodness, worthiness and intention. Take a deep breath in. And as you sigh it out, slowly blink the eyes open. Welcome back. Welcome back. What was that experience like? You can let us know in the chat if you wish. We're just going to get right into it. So page one, the very, no, page two. Yeah page two of your book, of your workbook. We're going to start with that. We're going to set a little timer. And we're going to just reflect for three minutes. What is in between your current self-care practice? And maybe we're starting from like, you know, the baseline. Maybe there Maybe there isn't much of a practice. Maybe there's just this beautiful desire and intention and that's so, that belongs. But what's in between that? And absolutely like head over heels, loving your self-care practice. That's what I want you to reflect on and journal on. The timer is going, so go ahead and reflect, like, what is it? What are these barriers? Why do you dread it or see it as a chore or a box to check? Like, what is the resistance, you know? And what do you already intuitively think it is lacking? Whether that's a limiting belief or whether it's the truth of some resources you need to gather, I'll just give you a couple minutes to reflect and maybe I'll go ahead and share some music.
let me go ahead. I'm going to share some common answers to this question. <laughs> so one of the top ones I hear and one that I have internalized myself is feeling bad at self care. And if we feel bad, if we feel like we are unskilled at something, we're not going to want to do it, especially those of us who are really driven by in a competitive nature, if you will, and just being good at things, <laughs> okay? So if we feel like we're bad at it, we're not going to want to do it, whether it's meditation, a consistent workout practice, you know, running, whatever it is. Inconsistency is a huge, huge part of not being in love with your self-care practice. Lack of variety. Oh, this was so real for me and especially like my movement rituals. I need variety and that's when things really changed for me. Not focusing on intentions or feelings. Like, let me know if this is resonating with y'all in the chat. I would love to hear. No community. That's a huge one. We need each other. We need to share the truth about our struggles with these things because Patriarchal capitalism will tell us we've got to do it perfect and we've got to do it alone. And it's just not true. No accountability. We're going to talk about that here in a bit. And lack of resources, tools, examples, ideas, and inspiration. These are all huge reasons why we don't love our self-care practice. And so with that, what I've kind of seen over my work as a wellness coach is that you can really break it down into structure and grace when it comes to self-care. Like we need a balance between both of these things, you know, and I say here, self-care without self-compassion just doesn't work. Self-care without self-love is bullshit. Like I, I heard it best when a client told me, like, I don't need to be the drill sergeant of myself, you know, in trying to stick perfectly to my morning ritual, you know, she needed a little more grace. And we always need to couple self-care activities and actions with self-love or self-compassion. And of course, compassion is when the heart naturally goes towards our own suffering. That's compassion. Yeah, you can think of it as masculine and feminine energies, if that's something you're working with, the yin and the yang, the active and receptive sides of self-care. Self-care has really become synonymous with actions, like what are we doing to make ourselves feel better, to take care of ourselves? That's the structure. But there's this other side, the being. We need the doing and the being. And I think the being is where we're really lacking here. You know, how are we relating to ourselves? If your intention for moving your body has nothing to do with actually feeling better, it's not self-care. If it's about checking a box or making your body into a product for the male gaze or for this diet beauty industry obsessed machine that is our culture, the body is not a product. You know, this is the house within which you experience your spirit. So it, it's not self-care <laughs> if that's the purpose of moving your body, right? And I think even the, the best feminists among us can relate to this. This is sort of what structure looks like to me. It's the routine, it's the habits, it's the plan. It's sort of what we've started to call self-care, right? Those activities and actions that we take and hopefully consistently to really create this self-care structure for ourselves. And this is, on the other hand, what grace looks like. It's flexibility. It's the intention or, you know, that how do I want to feel that question we tapped into. It's the variety, in my opinion, because structure might say you have to do it the same every single day. You know, the drill sergeant in yourself. And Grace says, no, like we can mix it up. We're going to talk about mixing things up today. It's the self-compassion piece. So, you know, 
there's going to be some pages in your page three through five in your workbook. It's going to give you space to reflect later on these two aspects further. Okay, but you could go ahead and let us know, like, do you feel like your list that you just made of what's in between you and loving yourself, your self care more, is it more structure or more grace? Or do you see it as sort of a combination of the two? Something you can do is actually go through that list on page two and put an S or a G by each thing. Do I need more structure or grace when it comes to each of these things that's in the way? Emily says it's resonating. I have an inconsistent work schedule, so it's hard to get into a routine. And accountability would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe the grace there with yourself, the mixing it up, the variety. I love that. All right, so let me know structure or grace, and I'll definitely acknowledge that in the chat. But we're going to keep moving. There's a lot to cover today. Okay, so this is the habit loop. And it looks very complicated and confusing. And maybe it is, but I'm going to break it down. It's, it's a tool we use in my 12 week self love mentorship, become your own soulmate. And it's one of my faves for not only breaking down what we call bad habits, but getting underneath them and understanding the intention behind them with compassion. Because if we're just averse to ourselves and to the bad habit, then we're not going to change it. We actually become overly attached to that cycle of belief, and then we believe we're not worthy of change. So we need some non-attachment to our bad habits and we actually need compassion for ourselves when we're caught in a misaligned habit. Okay. <laughs> so the purpose of the habit loop is to identify the cue, the outcomes, and the core desire feelings associated with your good and bad habits. You know, good and bad are in quotes here because they're not really good or bad. You know, we can think about them as misaligned or aligned habits. Habits that will fall outside of your goals or your intentions. And you can feel it. You can feel when you're out of alignment, right? So this is an example that I give. <laughs> the cue is, you know, I get sleepy or it's 10 p.m., which is the time that I'm supposed to start, supposed to start getting ready for bed. And you can kind of think of it, I could go one or two ways with this. The, the more aligned, well, let's start with the less aligned piece. The less aligned habit looks like I ignore the time, and I actually have a timer that goes off so that I'm like, okay, it's time to start my routine. So if I ignore that, I might stay up late watching TV with my husband, like vegging on the couch. And that leads to this undesirable outcome of I'm too tired the next morning to practice self-care, you know, and then I skip it. And then, I mean, there's actually a spiral of like, I feel unworthy, you know, I mean, maybe I can make the U-turn and get back on track, but it's an undesirable outcome. The good habit on the other end would be going to bed on time, doing my routine and getting enough sleep. And then the outcome is, yeah, I'm gonna wake up on time and I'm gonna have gotten enough sleep. I'm gonna feel energized. So I'll definitely practice my self care. And now this is the most important part of it all, in my opinion. Core desired feelings are something Daniel Laporte talks about and I'm absolutely obsessed with her and her work. I can recognize that the same desire that I have to go to bed on time and to get that sleep and having that like long, luxurious wind down routine, the desired feelings are rest and relaxation. Yeah. And I can connect with that and say, that's worthy. That belongs. That's good. That's okay. That's natural. And I can look at the bad habit, the staying up late watching TV, what's underneath that? I can get underneath that and see, oh, it's the same. In this example, it's the same core desired feelings of rest and relaxation. 
but it's the habit that looks different. And so recognizing that my bad habit has that desire, that good and worthy desired feeling of rest and relaxation, I can have compassion for myself when I've chosen that misaligned habit in the past. But I can also hopefully in the moment when the cue goes off say, hmm, I'm wanting rest and relaxation. If I go with the more aligned habit, I'm gonna get that desired outcome. I'm gonna get that true sustainable, like higher intention and higher outcome of doing my self-care practice and feeling energized and being rested, you know? And I can see that that's better when the cue happens. And so I choose the good habit. Yeah? So I gave you three sheets in your workbook of the habit loop to work with, and it's pages six to eight. And there might already be a habit you know isn't in alignment for you. That would go under the bad habit. Perhaps your intuition is already telling you what the good habit would be, or you can look to the plan that we're gonna make here in a bit. You know, I want you to think about, and you can do this now or later, dear one, but think about like, what would the outcome be of each of these? If you went with the bad, if you went with the good, or the aligned and the misaligned. <laughs> we're using the shortcut language. What is it you're hoping to feel by carrying out each of these? You know, what is it you really, when you get underneath it, maybe it's the same, maybe it's not, because sometimes they don't line up and that's what this slide is all about. Sometimes there's sort of an easier feeling and then there's a feeling that we have to reach a little more for. So maybe the easy feeling is, hey, it's convenient. It's within reach. It doesn't require much energy of me. It doesn't ask a lot of me. You know, it's easy. And that's okay. Because what that's probably telling you is that there's something going on with your energy that you need to look at. But if you can motivate yourself to reach for the desired feeling that aligns with the good habit, which is probably something like, you know, self-love or just to be healthier, to live a long, fulfilled life, you know, these, these more lofty aspirations, can we reach for that? Can we have compassion for both? And then the cue is really the trigger point. Like, that's what happens when you have the choice, when there's the, the, the fork in the road and you actually have a choice between the aligned and the misaligned habit. And if it helps when you're doing this exercise, you can really visualize yourself, like the cue happens and you could go either way. And then I want you to embody seeing yourself, choosing the good habit, getting that core desired feeling, just like we practice in the meditation, you can, you can really visualize and spread it throughout your entire being and then see yourself getting that good outcome. Yeah, so any comments on this so far? I'm gonna go ahead and stop share. Caitlin, I need more balance between structure and grace. I find myself either strongly one or the other and then flipping back and forth. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. And we can have compassion for that cycle as well. I think that in some ways that's life, you know, we go to the extremes and we can start to hopefully slowly coming into a balance, but with compassion. Emily, you're blowing my mind. Thank you. It makes sense and seems obvious, but you're framing it in such a good way. Oh God, I'm glad this is resonating, dear one. Caitlin, I love the framing of misaligned. It is true and takes the judgment out of those habits. Yes, and I probably should change the language, but I think it's interesting how, you know, the shortcut and making it kind of a joke, I think it kind of cements it in our mind, but I, I am totally with you. And I try to make that distinction because when we attach to good and bad, that's what the ego wants. And it can really pull us into a dark place. Place. So thank you for acknowledging that. Awesome, dear ones. Yeah, spend some time uh, later going through the habit loop. Maybe there's a few habits you want to work with 
and really sitting and embodying, visualizing yourself, choosing that good habit. That's what's going to help make the difference. I'm sure of it. Okay, we're going to go right into our toolkit next. So let me share again. Y'all are so sweet. I'm glad you're here with me. All right. So your self-care toolkit is your arsenal of people, resources, activities, props that all support your practice. These are essential for sustaining self-care in the long term. So let's talk about stocking and mixing it up because we need both. That's kind of the structure and the grace again. Can't you see? So on page nine of your journal, I believe it, it of your worksheet, I just lost my place. Um, we get right into the, the, the stocking our toolkit. So if you want to turn there, page nine, I'm going to give you a moment actually to write down all of the self-care resources that you currently have. Because I think acknowledging what we already have resource for ourselves is a beautiful act of gratitude and self-love and acknowledgement, but also a reminder of like, oh yeah, look at what I already might have in my toolkit that I'm not utilizing. So I'll give you just a moment for that one. Go ahead. You know, this could look like this could even delve into like your spiritual life, your creative life, the things you're already doing that you might not see as self-care, calling a friend, walking your dog. What are you already doing? All right. You can always come back to this later if you need more time. Now on page 10, we're going to write down all of the self-care self resources you would like to gather for the future. Like what's already in your mind or what have you already been thinking about but haven't gotten around to that you would like to start gathering? It could be people. It could be you know, skills, it could be courses, it could be working with a coach. <laughs> what is it that you would like to start gathering? Again, I'll give you one minute. is the limit here. Don't hold yourself back. All right. So looking at your list, I want you to circle three that you're most excited about and that are attainable for you to start researching this week. Yeah, like until next Thursday. What could you commit to just looking into maybe, maybe you don't take any action yet, but you're just, you're going to start doing your research, your budgeting, your, your resourcing for three of these items. And if you want to share the one you're most excited about, I would love to hear it in the chat. 
so exciting and we want to celebrate each other like these are huge wins that we're committing to and it's important because we don't often have the space to talk about something as simple as your self-care toolkit that i will move on so mixing it up this is key i think it's true for everyone but especially people who have a personality like mine i'm really motivated by intrinsic good feelings. Like if something feels good, I'll do it. And I get stuck and stale and impatient and bored very, very quickly. I'm in Aries. I can't help it. So I've gotten a lot more grounded as I've grown and able to stick to a more consistent practice in the long term. Because sometimes the desire for variety is really just uh, pushing off what we don't want to face and what's uncomfortable especially if you're a type seven on the Enneagram. Uh, but, you know, the minute I, I can see it as a good thing too, because the minute I feel like I'm stuck in a rut, my spirit really goes in there and mixes it up and can keep me sustainable, can keep me going for the long term when I mix it up. So on page 11, I'll give you another moment to reflect on places where your self-care habit has grown stale you know, and then think about how you can breathe more life into these spaces. Maybe it's just one right now that you're working with, with the one minute we have. One place where self-care has grown really stale and an idea of how you might mix it up and breathe new life. You're doing so great. And I'd love to hear also once you're done reflecting All right, that is all the time we have for that one. Of course, come back to it later. Let us know in the chat, where are you excited to breathe new life into your routine? I can't give you all the answers. I don't know your life. You know, as a coach, I take this approach that my clients are the experts in their own lives. I'm the expert in self-care because I think about it all day. And I'm the expert in holding space because I was trained in it but you're the expert in what's gonna work for you. Absolutely, prioritize your expertise in you, your intuition. You can be trusted. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So who is excited about SMART goals? I'm sure many of us know and are familiar with SMART goals. We're gonna apply them to self-care. So, oh, first, I just want to check on the chat real quick. So, Caitlin, I want to find an online YouTube dance class. Yeah, and she's excited about SMART goals. I knew you would, my fellow nerd. Um, yes, I'm all about online and YouTube dance classes. We should talk. Let's do them together. How much fun would that be? I love it so much. Oops. Okay, back to sharing. On to the SMART goals. So SMART, in case you don't know, stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. If it's not SMART, it's likely to fail. So set yourself up for success, because guess what? If you're not creating a SMART goal, you're probably subconsciously sabotage self-sabotaging you know and and i think we can all get in touch with that sense of like oh i really don't want to do it you know it's like uh, there's that resistance to caring for ourselves to putting in a little more effort but remember you only get in what you put out if you're vegging out 
you know, staring at a screen for hours on end each day, yes, it might feel relaxing. Yes, you might get something out of it, but it's nothing compared to what you're going to get out of cultivating a relationship with yourself, feeling good in your body, growing in your spirit, and, you know, just caring for yourself for the long haul. So make those goals smart and you cannot fail. They really answer the questions, what, where, when, and how. Like you're getting hella specific with these SMART goals and we're gonna create one today. And this is an example of one of my SMART self-care goals from some time ago. I will do dance cardio and stretching at least three times each week for at least 45 minutes each session. Okay, so it's a SMART goal, isn't it? It's specific. I'm telling you what I'm gonna do. I'm not just saying, oh, I'll work out a few times each week. No, I'm saying I will do dance cardio. And if I was gonna get really specific, I would tell you who I'm doing and what I subscribe to and everything like that. Um, and stretching, incorporate stretching through a different program that I use. So that's very specific, right? It's measurable too. I'm doing it at least three times each week so I can keep track of, you know, did I do this or not? It's a very clear cut goal. I can check that box three times each week and know that I did it. I can measure it for at least 45 minutes minutes each session. Again, measurable. It's, um, it's attainable for me. For, and, and that's going to look different for all of us, right? What's possible for you? For me, this is more than attainable. If I had said five times each week, that might have been, you know, a nice, a nice idea. I think sometimes we set the bar high again, subconsciously self-sabotaging ourselves. It's like that inner perfectionist. If I can't do it, to the max, then I'm just not going to do it at all, you know, and then I can't fail. If I don't set a goal, then I can't fail. And that's where the grace comes in, dear ones. So that's the attainable piece, the relevant. It's relevant to my overall intention to take care of my body, to feel good in my body, to live a long, happy life, to take care of my heart. So the relevance is what's relevant to you, your values, your dreams, your goals. And then T, it's time bound. I'm doing it 45 minutes and I'm doing it three times each week. It doesn't get more time bound than that. So turning to your worksheet again, I keep losing my place. <laughs> um, yes. Page 12. I want you to go ahead and come up with just one smart self-care goal. And if you really get proud of it, I want you to type it in the chat so we can celebrate each other. You know, I shared one. I'd love to hear what yours are. Let's do it. One minute. You got this. Just one smart self-care goal. And if you have a question, Ellen is the smart, I'll tell you. We can break it down together. This is something I make all my clients do. <laughs> it's just good practice with any goal. Y'all are doing so great. All right, we've already got one. Thank you, Caitlin, for sharing. She says, I will do one dance sesh one times a week for 30 minutes at least each session during the month of November. Oh, I love that, dear one. Yes, it's specific. It's a dance sesh. It's measurable once a week during the month of November. It's attainable for her. 
that I love that. Just once a week, you got this. It's relevant to her goals, which we're going to talk about what are they, and it's time bound. It's 30 minutes once a week for the month of November. Oh, I love those clear delineations. Let me know how it goes. I'm so proud of you. That's fantastic. If anyone else wants to share, we will acknowledge you as a community, of course. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share again. We're gonna go pretty quickly through these next pages of your worksheet without doing them in real time because I'm noticing we've only got 10 minutes left for this one hour training. But very quickly, okay, Emily, I will do at least two of my physical therapy exercises every morning because it makes me feel so good. Yes, and that's the next step actually, is what is the core desired feeling underneath your smart goal? That's really your beautiful intention you can come back to. And Emily, you hit the nail on the head because it makes me feel so good. That's why you're doing it. Yes, yes. Love that so much. And that is a smart goal. Well done. All right, we're going to share again. Coming up to the end, y'all. Thanks for sticking with me. This has been a blast. I love talking about this stuff. So the next thing are, like I said, the core desired feelings. You know, this is your why. This is what makes you love it, you know, because you're asking yourself, what, do, what is it I want to feel? And maybe this came to you in the meditation, but looking at your SMART goal, you know, what is it that you want to feel with this SMART goal? And for me, again, my example of my dance cardio is I want to feel free, strong, flexible, sexy, flowy, and alive. Yes. Don't be afraid to put tons of words on this page. <laughs> Like, what are your CTFs for each SMART goal? That can really help you connect to it. But you're going to do this on your own time after the training ends. And then on page 14, using those CDFs, looking at your SMART goal, what is a mantra you can create? And maybe it's simply, you know, it feels good. It feels good to move my body. Moving my body regularly makes me feel alive. Or if it's a meditation goal, you know, so many of my clients are working on establishing regular meditation ritual and practice. Maybe for them, it's, you know, may I become more awake and aware of what is real. That's a beautiful sort of insight meditation goal or mantra rather. So after the training, write out your mantra and then put it somewhere you can see it every day. Maybe it's on your mirror. Maybe it's by your monitor on a post-it, you know, and then move it around because we can get into these patterns where we stop seeing things that are always in front of us in a routine way. Again, mixing it up, maybe, you know, putting it uh, by your bed, whatever works for you, but you can connect to that when that cue from the habit loop comes up, you can say, oh yeah, I actually need to stick to this and keep it going. And I'm gonna just quickly talk about barriers and solutions. Again, I want you to, to do this on your own time, but on page 15, you're gonna write down on the left side of that line, all the red flags, all the sticky places that you envision coming up as you take action. So for me, you know, it's like the light is waning. And I used to work out after work, after the work day ended. But now it's like, oh, the light is waning. And the last thing I feel like doing is dancing. So my solution on the other side of that line, what you're going to do, again, you can be trusted. You're the expert in your own life. I'm going to work that 45 minutes into my existing morning routine three times each week. So I might have to swap out for a shorter meditation or, you know, drop my journaling practice or wake up a little earlier, but I'm going to actually do it in the morning because I feel more energized. There's more light that works better for me. So I want you to do this on your own time. This is how, like in the beginning, we can solve for our own barriers using the SMART goal method. And then finally, I know it's like, 
Ellen, this is all great. Like I can have my smart goal and I can have my habit loop and I know my core desire feelings and I got my barriers, my solutions. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not going to do it. You know, I just know myself and I'm just, I'm going to let the ball drop. I'm not going to stick to it. Accountability is the bedrock of your self-care practice. And as it grows from a chore to a craving, that might shift. You know, accountability is key when it's a chore. Accountability is key when your self-care still feels like a chore. But as it becomes a craving, and it might take many years for this to happen, it might just take a week. Who knows? If it's intrinsically feeling good, it might not take long at all. But as it becomes a craving, dear ones, the accountability falls back a bit. Maybe not completely, but it softens or it looks different. You, you become accountable to yourself and to what feels good because you love yourself and it's become a craving. So for my uh, workout, you know, maybe I'm texting a sweaty selfie to an accountability buddy. Who knows, you know, the number of times I'm working out or maybe even knows my schedule to take it to the max. Or maybe I just put them in my calendar and I have an alarm that goes off, you know, and that sort of self accountability. There are many different kinds of accountability. There's, there are even apps that donate to like a political campaign that you're against when you fail. <laughs> That's like extreme accountability. So there's many, many ways to hold yourself accountable. And sorry, I had to blow through that because that's a really important part and I'm here for any questions about accountability. Caitlin says, smart goal plus intention, smart eye. <laughs> I smart. Yes, I love it. I <laughs> so good. Okay, so speaking of accountability, working with a coach is like solid gold for this. You know, you probably don't wanna burden your friends and family asking them to check in with you weekly or daily on your meditation practice, meal prep, whatever it is. But that's what I'm here for. So I check in with one-on-one -on -one clients on these things every single week. I have them in my calendar, we text. It's great, it's part of the whole package of working with me. And I do these free 30-minute exploratory sessions where we can break down everything you just came up with in this Tour to Craving workbook and talk about getting you accountability and just flesh out more of why this matters to you, what your journey looks like. Thank you so much for joining Toward to Craving. Like this is my favorite stuff to talk about is how to infuse this balance of structure and grace into your self-care practice, how to stock and mix up your toolkit, how to get underneath your quote unquote bad habits and have compassion for them. Like this is the good stuff of what I love to talk about. And I am here for you. Reach out to me, Ellen at luminousleadings.com. I want to hear any questions you might have. I want to support you on your self-care journey, whether or not you hire me and work with me. There are tons of free offerings that I'm constantly putting out there because I care about self-care and I care about you caring for yourself and having a ritual and a routine that you just love so much. Thank you everyone for being here today. This was so much fun. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.